Okay, we're here uh, at Intel Forecast 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm here with Gordon Half with Red Hat. Welcome inside this uh, special Cube edition. Uh, Thank here. you. Um, so uh, let's talk about cloud. You used to be a former analyst. Uh, we yep. talked earlier uh, now at Red Hat talking about uh, cloud and evangelizing those solutions. Um, what's the disruption in cloud? Because I mean, cloud's been around for a while. We've had Chino. You know, the Gartner hype cycle, and then we had, you know, the trough of disillusionment and all that stuff. But, you know, we look back, we had cloud washing, everyone's cloud washing. Now we're kind of in the, I'd say, you know, a couple of years in now, we want to know where's the, where's the reality around the disruption, specifically in the data center here at Intel. It's about the future of the data center. So where is the disruption for the data center with cloud? Well, I think really what's going on with cloud is you've got, this sort of explosion in computing capacity and it's coming together with mobility and with big data. And as far as specifically within the data center itself is concerned, it's really a new way of managing these hybrid computing architectures. Um, in the service provider space, it's a little bit more about going to this fairly homogeneous uh, infrastructure with a large degree of standardization. Within Enterprise Data Center, it's more about being able to manage a heterogeneous infrastructure because most enterprises don't have the luxury of throwing everything out and starting over again. Do they have to have a heterogeneous environment to be successful with hybrid cloud? Oh, well they, don't, they don't need. If they have a homogeneous <laughs> environment, you know, good, good for them. That makes life a lot easier. But the reality with most enterprises is they do have a heterogeneous environment and they have to deal with it. So if I'm the buyer, I'm the buyer, I'm the enterprise customer. I mean, I've had a history of past 10 years becoming, in essence, cloud ready before the cloud even arrived. And that was server consolidation and virtualization, standardization on servers, now you know, SAN and now network storage, now with network virtualization, they kind of, they are kind of ready. So what benefits does the cloud offer a large enterprise who's got thousands and thousands of servers. I mean, is there an economic disruption there? Is it, what do you, what do you see there? Why, you know, so what, what is the cloud going to offer the buyer? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. In, in most cases in enterprise, having things like standardization, virtualization are going to make for a very good on-ramp to the cloud. But what cloud is for many enterprises is, is not even so much the technology in many cases, but rather it's a different way of thinking about delivering IT, getting away from manual processes, moving to a more automated infrastructure, uh, moving to a more services oriented view of IT where they're making service catalogs available. Think of it as making Amazon available to their end users, but under IT governance and control. But they want to get to that Amazon, but Amazon had the luxury like Rackspace and like other players, like software. They have the luxury of starting from scratch um, with a clean sheet of paper, designing their data centers and standardizing, doing all that standardization. Um, and with an enterprise though, they have legacy, they have apps, so porting all those apps over. Can you, so you, can you just parse out the difference between, you know, I have existing apps, thousands of apps inside my company, I just can't just port them to the cloud, but there's also new opportunities like mobility, can you talk about the differences between sure. what an enterprise might want to have there? Sure, so you know, they're going to have this catalog of existing apps. So first of all, in many cases, they can move those existing apps into a service catalog. Now, obviously doing that doesn't do anything magical in terms of scalability. If you have something that really does need to operate at cloud scale compared to sort of traditional enterprise scale, you probably are going to have to re-architect over time. But really what the goal here is, to, is to take your existing portfolio and move it in an evolutionary way. You know, kind of take things as is, sort of package them up in VMs or whatever. You know, if they're legacy apps that you don't really need to do anything with, maybe just keep them that way. Whereas applications that maybe really can deal with big data or mobile scale, then those are maybe applications that need to be rewritten or written from scratch for those new types of environments. I heard a comment last night at the reception that private cloud's a cop-out. Um, and in comment to where the reaction is between private cloud and hybrid cloud, um, essentially hybrid cloud is essentially public cloud with data center integration in my mind. But, the, but there's different definitions, but people like private cloud because it's an extension of their, of their data center. 
Can you talk about the difference between what's going on in the private cloud right now and the hybrid specifically? Because sure. there's, there's some confusion about yeah. what that means. I, I think there is, and it probably depends somewhat on the specific business. Uh, I actually look at hybrid as more of a superset of the private cloud, where our customers, they're interested in building essentially a private cloud, but they want to maintain that flexibility to make use of public cloud resources when it makes sense to, whether it's today or whether it's in the future, at maybe even different points of an application life cycle. As an analyst in your former life, you, know, you have that kind of view, mindset, uh, you look at kind of the players in the marketplace. Talk about um, the players around mobility, because mobility seems to be a big driver right now around forcing some of this change around some of the cloud deployments because of the bring your own device to work and consumerization of IT trends that are kind of forcing the IT managers to be more business savvy around those apps. Can you talk about the mobility landscape in terms of how those applications are helping move the cloud over? Sure, you know, it's one of these things, they're both a result of the cloud at some level and they're uh, enabling the cloud at some level. So you have all the, you have this sort of cloud scale being driven by mo mobile apps, mobility, uh, you know, sort of all these different endpoint devices. And at the same time, you, you have this real need to deliver everything in the form of you know, either a mobile app or in terms of web, a web interface type of thing. So really shifting away from having hardwired endpoint devices really drive mobility in the back end as well, and that's cert certainly one base of cloud. Have you been following the network virtualization piece? Because that seems to be the last leg of this journey around getting your existing data center infrastructure set up at least for full converged infrastructure and taking advantage of all this cloud technology. Network and IO always seems <laughs> to be the last thing <laughs> that uh, gets dealt with. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think that's absolutely right. And one of the trends that I think we're seeing is, you know, I kind of just mentioned it in terms of mobility, sort of demanding this very flexible web-based interface as opposed to hardwired interfaces. Network is kind of the same thing, moving to a much more software-enabled networking so that you can really dynamically change things in the fly, where it'd be sort of, just as you can't use traditional enterprise storage very effectively in a cloud architecture, you also really need networking, which is dynamic and that can change based on loads. One of the things that we're reporting on SiliconAngle.com and through our research team at Wikibon.org is um, that cloud is not so much a technical thing as much as it is a business model opportunity around making it fit the business, whether you're an OpEx or you're at a CapEx. All these things are all in these new economic models is really the opportunity. Um, so with that in mind, um, do you agree that it's a business model opportunity for, for customers? And, and if you do, what would be your comment around sharing what you've seen in terms of use cases? Because there's no one cloud for everyone. No. And so it seems to be that a business model decides the implementations on a pre-existing data center and or infrastructure. So, so one, do you agree that it's more of a business model, not a speeds and feeds issue? And if so, what use cases are you seeing out there on the business side that are driving cloud? Well, there's obviously operational aspects as well as just the OPEX and CAPEX angle. But the OPEX and CAPEX angle is, is obviously very interesting to a lot of companies. A lot of startups, for example, can get going, can get off the ground without spending a lot of dollars, capital dollars, to bring in servers for things that may not work. At the same time, we're seeing companies like Zynga, for example, who are moving capacity back in-house once they understand the nature of their applications and what kind of capacity they need. Because one of the things that I think we've learned over the last couple of years is this idea that computing is always going to be cheaper in a public cloud isn't necessarily the case. That's a good point about Zynga, and one of the things that we've been saying uh, and talking about in our communities is um, clouds going through a rewrite, and, and a lot of people looking at that as an as a inhibitor to adoption, but when in reality, um, again, this is another point that kind of gleaned out of this conversation was, it's just about agile. So agile, agility, agile programming, agile business, cloud allows you to take advantage of that, and, and the fact that Zynga's rewriting is a business case for their business. Yeah. They wouldn't be in business if it wasn't for Amazon. They started right. on the cloud. So, right. so, you, so how agile can you be? 
you know, get, yep. st get started and grow, and then you reach a tipping point, and now you've got to bring it in-house. Yep. That's just the way their business is. It has nothing to do with cloud. Right. It's just their requirements, their use, their use yeah. case. I mean, yeah, essentially, cloud provides, and it's cloud in the big sense, but just provides a lot more options. If you have some application that can be served by a software as a service that doesn't add value to your business, you know, can outsource it effectively and concentrate on what's important to your business. And absolutely, whether you're using a public cloud or a private cloud or a platform as a service or an infrastructure as a service, one of the real driving forces here is to be able to do things more quickly, to get new services online. It's actually not as nearly as much of a cost driver as, say, virtualization was when it first came in. Yeah, well, we're a believ big believer in cloud. We're watching cloud heavily on Silicon Hill Wikibon. Um, we think cloud is a disruptive market, but the question is going to come down to where is those disruptions going to come from for the buyer? I'm, I'm, I'm Joe Enterprise and I have thousands of yeah. servers. It has to come from either economic savings and or value to the business. So you know, that's going to render itself in how they s deliver their services. And there's going to be greenfield opportunities yeah. that, that would be great for the cloud. And then non-mission critical stuff can move to the hybrid cloud. So, so we're really bullish on it. Um, with that, Gordon, uh, ask you a final question. What do you see happening in the next couple of years? As we go through this iteration, cloud is really an industry that's evolving and continuing to evolve. Where you know we cover big data, that's growing really rapidly, but it's not a core infrastructure. It's just a uh, I don't want to say fringe, but peripheral uh, development around cloud. What's your vision for cloud over the next three five years? Yeah, I think there are a couple of the trends that are happening. One is platforms of service is evolving very rapidly, and one of the ways that I think we're seeing it evolve is towards approaches that enable portability and openness between different providers. Uh, the platform as a service approaches that sort of limit you to a single provider, I think people have tended to find those somewhat limiting. So having those portable approaches to different providers, different clouds, in-house, at a public cloud provider, have really been gaining some traction. And I think more broadly, if you look at the sort of architectures that people are looking at adopting, they're starting to think more about how do they maintain their future options as opposed to creating a new type of data center silo, which is a route they've been down many times before. So they want flexibility. They want, flex they want flexibility. They won't be in control of their future, not some IT vendor. So platform as a service, on air, again, an area we're covering, and one of the debates that goes on in that business is, and I wrote a blog post about this, is on one hand you have an approach called race to zero, where it's a commoditization mm -hmm. and a complete race to zero, a la hosting, and then a differentiated value model where software and services can be you know, bolted onto that, uh, the, to the commoditization of the platform. What's your take on what people need to do to avoid the, I mean, no one wants to be in the race to zero business. Right. I mean, it's one or two winners and that's it. I think differentiation is key. What do you see as the differentiator for PaaS platform as a service? Well, it be ultimately, PaaS is, at some level, is about the developer, while also recognizing the needs of enterprise IT. So I think we're going to see different types of deployment models, uh, whether it's DevOps, whether it's hosted, whether it's something that we've been calling IT ops, where IT is control in control, while still providing this ease for developers. And I think ultimately a lot of it's going to be about balancing innovation, so easy scalability, um, just ease of use in general, while not restricting someone to a single provider where you know, if that provider raises their prices, you know, they, they have to sort of start over from scratch. Gordon, thanks for sharing your perspective with SiliconANGLE on theCUBE, we appreciate it. Uh, We'll be right back with our next guest. We're at Intel Forecast 2012. We'll be right back.